Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stacy. If you've been watching my channel for a while, you'll know that I have just recently got into sewing. Um, recently, I mean October of 2022, so just a few months. I did already have a sewing machine that I bought about 10 years ago, but I never really learned to use it, and so it's just been in the attic for years. So when I got into sewing in October, I realized pretty quickly how much I love it, and I knew that I needed some extra supplies to really help me work on some of the projects that I'm interested in doing. I do go to the thrift store quite often, probably once a week-ish, and um, some antique stores around town, and I have been picking up some things really cheaply um, for sewing, and that's my plan, at least for the first year or two, to get everything as cheap as I possibly can, because I want to make sure that I stick with it. First, I'm going to start with some sewing books that I picked up, actually not at a thrift store. I got these at a used bookstore called Mr. K's in Johnson City, Tennessee, and and sewing books are actually hard to find. You can find a ton of books on quilting, knitting, crocheting, all that kind of stuff, but just like the basics for sewing or sewing clothes, I think it's really hard to find those kinds of books. So I was really excited when I saw these. So I got this one, it is called New Dress A Day, The Ultimate DIY Guide to Creating Fashion Do's from Thrift Store Don'ts by Marissa Lynch. This book is really awesome, especially for someone who likes to thrift a lot. So the whole purpose of this book is uh, she will buy something at the thrift store and then she will work on it and sew it and transform it into something else, something that she would really like to wear. And I think that is the coolest. I love being able to find things at the thrift store that I think I can transform because I really do love making costumes and cosplay and stuff like that. I also found this book, So Serendipity, Fresh and Pretty Designs to Make and Wear by Kay Witt. What I really liked about this one is that it looked really easy. The stuff looked relatively simple. Uh, simple probably isn't the best word because I always struggle with things I even think are going to be simple. But I really liked um, all the drawings that were in here and how things were explained. It has some really cute things that I would actually like to wear. So I am excited for this one. It also came with a pouch with all the patterns for the stuff in it. So you don't just get a book, you get the patterns also. And this book was only $5. Um, all of the books that I got were $5. The next one I picked up is this one, More Sew It Yourself Home Decor by Chris Jeffries. This is exactly what it sounds like. It's more home decor type stuff. So like pillowcases and curtains, things like that. And I actually am wanting to learn how to do curtains. I haven't done curtains yet. I do have some naked windows that need to be covered. So I think this book will be really helpful because it shows you um, several different designs for curtains, little half curtains and whatnot. So yeah, I think all of these books are gonna be really helpful. All right, next I'm gonna show some fabric. This one might seem a little bit weird because this is actually a whole skirt. <laughs> this is a skirt that I saw that I really liked the fabric for. I really liked this um, plaid pattern color and I honestly would have just worn this like this but this does not fit. It is too small and I knew that when I bought it but I am very excited about cutting this up and using this fabric for something else. And here is one of my ideas. I'm either going to attempt to make one of these hats and it's supposed to be pretty simple and they only use a yard of fabric so I could definitely get a hat out of this. Or I might make a tote bag because I did make just a regular cotton plain tote bag but I think a wool one with plaid would be really cool for winter time. So that is my thinking with this. I also got a great score on actual just cut fabric from the thrift store. All of these are Christmas patterns, so I probably won't be using these anytime soon because Christmas is now over. But this is two yards. This one is two yards. And, and this red one is also two yards. But yeah, I got all of these for 40 cents a piece. 
And if you guys ever buy fabric, you know you cannot get fabric for 20 cents a yard. That is just insane. So I snagged this up right quick and I'm not sure what projects I will do with this because I have like a year to think about it, but I am very excited that I found that. All right, I found a bunch of buttons, um, vintage mixed buttons at an antique store and they were very cheap. I haven't actually learned to do buttonholes yet. I can sew a button on, but I, I don't know how to do a buttonhole yet. And that is one of my first priorities for the new year is to learn how to do buttonholes, that and zippers. I'm very excited to learn how to do a zipper. I got this package of these little brown buttons. They look like mushrooms to me. This pack was 90 cents. I got these mixed variety, all different kinds for 60 cents. I got some cream colored buttons for 90 cents. A mixture of black for a dollar. And I'm not sure why these all had different prices. These ones are my favorite. I don't know how well you can see those, but um, this says vintage and mix brown and gold buttons. This one was $2.10. And now for my absolute favorite part of this haul, this is what I'm so, so happy that I found. Actually, my kids got me some of these for Christmas. They found some at an antique store and then I found a bunch more. Actually at the thrift store Habitat for Humanity, they had a bunch of these there for two for 25 cents. So if you live near one of those, definitely go check it out. But I got a ton of vintage clothes patterns. So I got a couple different dress patterns and I think dresses are probably gonna be the easiest thing to make. I'm just guessing, but I do need to learn how to do a zipper. I got this one. This one looks incredibly easy. There's only three main pieces, it says on here. So I think this is probably the most simple one to try. Maybe this will be the first one that I try. This one's kind of funny to me because it says size 42 and I feel like that's probably like British sizing or something. I'm not really sure if that is for Americans or not or if any of this stuff will actually fit me at all. I was just so excited to find it. This one looks a lot of fun to me also. I think I could make some really cool costumes with this. I think this skirt will be pretty simple because I don't think it takes uh, zippers or buttons. These pants or shorts or whatever they are, are literally everything to me. I think these are my favorite. I love this style so much. I don't even know what it's called. I don't know what era it's from. I really don't know anything about vintage clothing. I've never had an interest in it in my life until I started sewing. And then I started noticing clothing more. I started noticing like the lines and shapes of clothing for some reason. But yeah, I am just obsessed with these pants and cannot wait to make these. Here is another super fun pattern that I think I could make some really cool costumes with. This isn't stuff that I would necessarily wear all the time, but I think this would make for some cool costumes and like photo shoots, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I love it. This one I loved in particular because of the collars. Um, I never wear shirts with collars. But I think they are just so sharp looking and these ladies look so put together and so well dressed to me. I just really want to attempt to make shirts with collars. This one actually has the year on it. It says circa 1968, but look at these capes. Look at them. Oh my gosh, how stunning are these? You know, if you go out the door wearing one of these, everyone is gonna notice you. Everyone is gonna have something to say. I just think these are the coolest things ever. I would love to throw my cape on and go to the store. <laughs> I have got to make one like this. I did make a cape for my daughter, but it's a very costumey type of cape. And I actually made it out of curtains and bed sheets. I really want one of these made out of wool. That would be just so neat. And then I've got this one, which I think might be the hardest pattern I have um, because it's so tailored. If I feel like if you get it wrong, it will really look off on you. It has to look just right. But I love the set, the you know, matching top and bottom. Again, I just think these ladies look so put together, um, which is the opposite of how I look 99% of the time. And as I'm filming this, I actually have pajama bottoms on and it's like two o'clock in the afternoon. So there's that. Okay, and one more thing that I'm gonna show just cause you can see it in this picture here. 
This rack right here is not thrifted. My husband got this off of Amazon, but the specific spools of thread on here that have like the black on the top, they are all thrifted. I found a container that was just full of old thread. Not sure if this thread is any good. Like does thread have a life cycle? Does it go bad um, or get like weaker over time? I kind of feel like it would. So I don't know how great it would be to use super old thread. So anyway, guys, that is all I've got for this thrifted sewing haul. I'd love to know if you guys have a favorite um, era of like clothing or fashion, a certain style that you really gravitate towards. I'm personally really liking the 40s and 50s style right now. I just think that style is so gorgeous and so put together. Anyway, that is all I got for you guys. I hope you all have a great day and I will see you all soon. Bye.